Buff163 is the largest CS2 marketplace in the entire world and even has the highest average discount on skins. And even though they've been around for over 5 years, to many Counter-Strike users, Buff still remains a mystery. So today, I'm going to break down every single piece of information about Buff163 that you need to know so you can start saving money on skins right now. Oh yeah, and make sure to stick around to find out how to enter this week's giveaway. Let's start at the beginning. Buff163 is a peer-to-peer -peer skin trading website founded on August 17th, 2018 in Hangzhou, China. It's important to note that a peer-to-peer -peer marketplace means that when an item is sold on the website, it's traded directly from the seller's Steam inventory to the buyer's Steam inventory. This is the alternative to bot trading websites where a seller must first deposit an item before it can be listed on the market. Over the past five years, Buff163 has become so large that at the time of this recording, they had over 4.5 million website visits in the last month alone. The majority of the Buff163 user base is Chinese at roughly 34% with the second largest being the United States at only around 8.5%. Buff163 is intended to be a Chinese only marketplace and should not be confused with the website Buff Market which is intended for the rest of the globe. Some key differences between the two are the size and the seller fee. Buff Market's only about 10% of the size with around 450,000 website visits in the last month and they also have a larger 4.5% seller fee compared to Buff163 which only has a 2.5% fee. This means if you sell your skins on Buff market, you'll lose 2% more of your money per sale. Now that you have some background knowledge, let's take a tour of the website. But before we do that, here's a quick word from my friends over at GamerPay. Today's sponsor, GamerPay, wants to sponsor you with a free 5 euros on your first 50 euro deposit. GamerPay is an extremely trustworthy peer-to-peer -peer skin trading website where you can find some of the cheapest CS2 skins on the market. Take a look at this MAC-10 fade, for example. Currently, the cheapest one is on GamerPay. GamerPay is the only marketplace with no buying or selling fees, and you can even sell your skins on a trade log. What are you waiting for? Click the link in the description to claim your free 5 euros today! One of the absolute best CS2 marketplaces with some of the cheapest prices out there. If you've never accessed the website before, it's very important that you watch out for phishing links. Phishing links in the Counter-Strike space are usually malicious links intended to get users to unknowingly provide their Steam login information in order to gain access to their account and take their skins. Since Buff163 is such a popular website with so much traffic, there are tons of imposter links, so it's important to avoid those by navigating to the website safely. If you search Buff163 on Google like so, this is what pops up. A sponsored link at the top and the link below which is the actual buff163 website. I'm not sure if the sponsored link is actually a scam, but a good rule of thumb is to just never click sponsored links. And to be quite honest, I'm not even going to click this link. The safest way to the website is by typing in the URL directly which is simply buff.163.com. I'll leave a safe link to it in the description below. I'd recommend bookmarking this page so you know you're clicking a safe link every time going forward. If you've never signed in before, click login slash register in the top right corner. This menu is what pops up. Before moving forward in the signup process, here's a quick tip. Many CS2 related websites will ask you to sign in through your Steam account with a menu like this. But to ensure you're signing in safely and not blindly giving away your login information, navigate to the official Steam webpage at steamcommunity.com and sign in on there first. From now on, you know that any website that shows this new Steam sign-in menu is safe to use. Simply click sign in. If a website continues to show the original sign-in page asking for your credentials, there's a high likelihood it's a scam. Okay, now that we covered that, it's time to create a Buff account. Even though signing in through Steam is an option, you won't have complete access to Buff until you've linked a phone number. So I recommend signing up with a phone number first and linking your Steam account once you're in. Unfortunately, as of August 2023, Buff completely removed the use of US and Canadian phone numbers. Luckily, I spent some time finding a workaround and have a complete tutorial on how to create an account if you're from North America. If you'd like to watch that, click the card right here. Otherwise, if you're from anywhere other than NA, simply navigate to your country code, input your phone number, click get code, and solve the puzzle. Once you receive the text message with your code, simply type it in and log in. Now that you've registered, navigate to your account page by clicking the icon in the top right corner, then click account. From here, you'll see a section labeled Steam ID in which you can click connect where you'll be able to link your Steam account. While you're at it, also make sure to link your API key and trade URL which can easily be found by clicking the to get button on each of them respectively. Then just copy and paste them in. If you don't already have an API key, you'll be prompted to type in something before receiving it, but you can just type whatever you want. The final requirement outside of the site is to make sure you have the Steam Guard mobile authenticator already set up and linked with your Steam account or else it'll take 15 days to make trades which won't fly on buff. And with that, you've completed the sign-up process.
On top of linking your Steam account, API key, and trade URL, there are a plethora of other helpful settings found in these menus. Let's start with the things that you must enable and disable while you're still in this tab. As you can see, there are a bunch of settings listed under Preferences. First, you have the option to enable or disable bargains. I recommend leaving it enabled. This allows people to send you offers on your listed items that you, at the very least, would like to see, but you'll always be able to decline if you wish. The same goes for bargain messages. I also leave this enabled so users can message me about potential offers they have for my listed items. I'll show you guys the bargain menus later when we take a look at the app. Next, you can choose which payment options you're willing to accept. Unless you're from China, I'd highly recommend only accepting Alipay as WeChat is pretty much the Chinese equivalent of Apple Pay, which most of us won't have access to. Store display I always leave as open, and here you can just choose what currency you want things displayed in. Next up is whether or not you always want the trade offers to be created by the buyer when your item is sold. I personally also leave this checked because in the past I've had people purchase an item and request for me, the seller, to create the trade offer, but since I don't have the buff app on my phone, I don't get a notification when the item sells and end up being penalized for not sending it on time. But since this box is checked, the buyer creates the trade offer and I instantly receive a trade offer notification from the Steam app on my phone when my items are purchased. Here you can also allow text notifications, which can be useful, as well as decide what level of anti-scam you'd like. To be honest, I've never messed with this and always leave it on strict to avoid any chance of scams. If you're from China, you can choose the Steam China server inspect client here, but for most most of you, I'd leave this on Steam. The next option is preferential. You can choose whether you'd like to see your buff inventory in estimated Steam price or in buff price. I always leave this as buff price as it's the industry standard and is less confusing since you're seeing the price on the buff website. The next setting is very niche but may be important to some of you. On top of being able to see the estimated value of your inventory, you're also able to make notes on specific items in your buff inventory. For example, since I do a lot of trading, I write KEEP in all caps on my play skins so I never accidentally sell them on buff. But this setting makes it so whenever you purchase an item on buff, it automatically writes the price you purchased it for in the notes. I never have this checked off. The final setting is about preview screenshots. As you can see on the purchase page for field tested AK Neon Revolutions, some of them have screenshots from CS2 and some have the stock image. If you uncheck this setting, you'll only be able to see the stock images instead of real screenshots, which show you how the item actually looks in game. I always have this turned on. One setting that you may have noticed I skipped over at the top is the real name verification. Unless you have a Chinese mainland ID, this process is nearly impossible to do as I've tried it with my US ID many times. Luckily, you can still use the website in its entire entirety even if you don't complete it. Now let's quickly glance over at the rest of these settings tabs. First is my wallet. Here you're able to see your balance at the top. Under this there are three tabs labeled deposit, withdraw, and transactions. Unless you have access to Alipay, WeChat, or ePay, you will never need to worry about these. But me for example, the person I purchased buff balance from does it directly through Alipay's QR code system. So let's say I'm depositing 500 RMB, I'd type that number in here, click confirm, and send over the QR code to my balance distributor where he scans it and I receive the balance on buff instantly. If you do it like that, you'll see a record of all of your deposits at the bottom of this page. The withdraw tab is useless unless you've completed real name verification, but you'll never need this. If you're ever looking to cash out, you can sell your balance or just simply purchase some skins totaling the amount in your wallet. The transactions tab keeps a complete record of every purchase, sale, and deposit you've ever made on the website. Next is the messages tab. The trade messages tab keeps you up to date on Steam trades sent and received when selling or purchasing items on the website so you complete them in time to avoid penalties. The system messages notifies you of new device logins as well as trading penalties you may receive on the site. As you can see, my selling function has been suspended before due to untimely completion of trades. And finally, the bargain messages is where you'll be able to message users you're bargaining with, which can also be done directly through the app. On the far right of any item listing, there is a small orange heart with a plus sign on it. Anytime you click this, the item will be added to your watch list, which can be seen under the favorites tab in the settings. This can make items easier to keep track of if you have your eye on a lot of skins at once. Buff163 also has a point system in which you receive one point for every one RMB you transact on the site. This goes for buying and selling. The My Benefit Settings tab is seemingly supposed to be the hub for your points, but I've personally never used it because in here it just directs you to use the app to redeem your points instead. I'll go into further depth on the point system when we tour the app. Finally, the last tab is the Submit Feedback tab in which you can contact customer support about any potential issues. I've done this a few times before just to see how responsive they are and without fail have gotten a helpful response within 48 hours. Alright boys, this week I'm giving away a Stat Trek Minimal Wear Opatheris. To enter, make sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and leave a comment letting me know what your favorite skin marketplace is. Also, just make sure to have your Steam trade link in your YouTube bio so I can send you the skin when you win. But make sure you don't skip a step or else you won't be entered.
Next, let's go over the main tabs on the website. But before we do that, I highly recommend downloading a quality of life Chrome extension to make Buff163 easier to interpret and to provide some extra help. My go-to extension is Buff Utility. Sadly, the creator of Buff Utility left the scene, which led to its official release being removed from Chrome, but this is still downloadable from a link I'll provide in the description. Once you click the link, Click the big blue download button and follow the step-by-step -step guide at the bottom of the page to easily install it. I do want to mention though, some people have questioned the safety of the extension now that it's no longer officially out, but I've never had any issues with it myself. This doesn't mean I'm positive it's completely safe though, so download it at your own risk. If you're worried about that though, another viable option is the Better Buff extension, which is based off of Buff Utility and was officially released on Chrome just a few weeks ago. There are a few key aspects I like from Buff Utility that are missing on it though, but I'm sure they'll continue to update it. I'll also leave a link to that in the description. As we go over the main tabs, I'll show you exactly what Buff Utility adds in order to make your life on Buff easier. The first tab is the home page, and there really isn't much to this page. I rarely spend any time on here, but it's sometimes cool just to see the popular skins that they show here. Most of the time, there are some rare sticker crafts that they tempt me with. It's almost like window shopping. Next is the market tab and the first instance of where you'll see some key differences with the Buff Utility extension enabled. Usually, all you'll see next to the items is the lowest listing price and the currency you selected from your settings. As you can see here, for me it's in USD, but with buff utility enabled, it shows the current lowest listing price for the item, the current highest buy order price, and most importantly, the percentage off discount from Steam price the item currently has. All of which is great information to have at a quick glance. I know it may be annoying at first to get used to RMB pricing, but it's very important to learn it and you'll quickly pick up on it. Also, if you simply click on a skin, thanks to Buff Utility, you can see the price in your selected currency in parentheses under the RMB price. Aside from all that, on the market tab, you can search for items with a plethora of different sorting options. Most of them are self-explanatory, for example, things like weapon, quality, and exterior, but one that may be a bit more confusing is the advanced sticker search. If you're looking for a skin with a specific sticker applied, simply click this all button on the right and click applied sticker. From there, simply search for the collection you're looking for and click the sticker you want. If you're searching for a sticker in a specific spot, just check off buy slot. Same goes for if you want to make sure the sticker isn't scratched at all, just check off 100%. Next is the news tab, which is another one I spend no time on, but that's likely because I can't read Chinese. The next tab is the inventory tab. In here, you have access to your entire Steam inventory, but the prices shown are the current lowest listings on buff. Again, you have some self-explanatory sorting options, but one important one is the display all one. If you're trying to have a look only at items in your inventory that you can currently sell, for example, things that aren't on a trade lock, simply click display all, then click saleable. Some other useful tabs in here are buy history and my bargains. Next is the sale tab. In here you can see all of your listed items as well as any that have been purchased which are still waiting delivery. You also have access to your sale history and maybe the coolest one of all your sales statistics. It's kind of crazy to know that I've sold over $10,000 in skins all time. Finally you have the buy order tab in which you can manage all of your pending buy orders and see a history of all of your previous ones. Lastly, before I go over exactly how to buy and sell the skins, let me quickly show you the buff app as we'll need that for the purchase process. Again, I'll say, if you're from NA, you won't be able to download the buff app by normal means. But in the video where I explain how to create a buff account, I also describe how to get access to the buff app. In the app, there are five main tabs. Let's start with the home tab. In here, you can search for items in a multitude of ways like trending items or by special floats. But one thing on this tab that's unique to the app is the trade up simulator. On here, you're able to find other people's posted trade up contracts as well as create your own and post them yourself if you please. I've definitely found a few hidden gems in here before. Next is the Discover tab. This is very similar to the News tab on the Buff website. I've never used it before, but if you read Chinese, I'm sure it's interesting. Next, we have the Inventory tab. This is nearly the exact same as the one on the website, but I find it much easier to navigate on the web. The same goes for the Sell tab. For the most part, I try to do everything that I can through the website since the app can be confusing at times, but one thing I do use the app for is bargains. As you can see, you're able to see any pending bargains you've received as well as a history of your previous ones. Finally, and most importantly, is the Me tab. This is like your home base in the Buff app. The most important menu in here is the Buy History menu, which you must access in order to complete purchases. I'll go into more depth on that when I show you an example of me buying an item. Some other important menus are the Bargain Messages and Points menu. This Bargain Messages menu will be your primary source for communication when you're in the midst of a bargain with either a buyer or a seller. Lastly, we have the Points menu. Here is where you'll be able to redeem your points that I mentioned earlier for things like renaming your yourself on the site or updating your profile picture.
All right, now I'll show you guys exactly how to make a purchase on the site. But in order to do that, you'll obviously need to have some website balance. Typically, obtaining buff balance is the biggest hurdle to overcome for CS traders on this website, but I luckily already have a complete guide on how to get some with three different methods. You can watch that by clicking the card right here. I will say though, I highly recommend finding a reputable balance trader as it has proven to be the easiest and most cost-effective method for me. Don't hesitate to reach out to me on Discord if you want me to refer you to someone. Now that you have balance, let's buy a skin. All right, on the website, navigate to the market tab and simply search for the weapon you want. For the sake of this, I'll look up the Night Riot, which is just a simple blue skin. As you can see at the top, there are a bunch of options here. You can choose whatever wear you'd like, as well as whether or not you'd like it to be stat track. For this, I'll just go for a factory new one, non-stat track. This sell and place buy order button are unimportant right now. I'll go over those in a little bit. But to make sure we cover all of our bases, there's also a button up here that says weapon case. If you click that, you can see every single weapon skin in the case of the skin you're currently looking at. As you can see, the Night Riot is one of the blues in the clutch case, but this is helpful sometimes if you're trying to find other skins in the case. Down here, there are some more options. First, we have the bundle trade button. This shows you any and all bundle trade that includes the Night Riot. So if you were to enter a float range, let's say I put in 0.01 below, now there's no bundle trades that include 0.01 or below factory new Night Riots. So that's something good to know. The buy orders tab, I'll go over in a bit when I'm talking about selling. The gallery tab, Tab, it just has different artistic images of the skin at hand. So as you can see, these are all the Night Riot. Next, you have trade records, which is kind of a cool one. This shows you all of the previous sales of the item you're looking at specifically. So for right now, it's just the factory new Night Riot. These are all actually sales that have happened today because today is the 21st of March. Next, you have the price trend. This shows you the trend of the price over the past month. For some reason, you are able to click last seven days as well, which makes sense because that is within the last month but if you try to click something above it like six months or a year you're prompted with this which says to view longer term price trend please exchange observer uh, so you're unable to do that for the most part and then finally you have the float ranking tab this tab shows you every single float of this skin ever registered on buff. Fun fact, this is actually how the Stat Trek Factory new AK Case Hardened 661 was discovered. Now, if we go back to the sell tab, there's also some more options. I'll go over bulk buy in a bit, but there's also float range. You can choose a bunch of these predetermined ranges, or you can set a custom one, which I'll do here. I'll leave the minimum at zero, but I'll set the maximum to 0.001. So this will only show us skins with triple zero floats. You can also choose the paint seed if you so wish. For example, you could type in 661 or something, uh, but we'll leave that blank for now. You can also search by name tag and you can search with or without stickers. You can also set a minimum and maximum price range. So say we wanted to set the maximum to a dollar. You'd only see skins with triple zero floats up to a dollar. Okay, yeah, once you find the skin that you want, there are a few options. Here you could just simply click buy, which I'll do in a second, but this is the add to favorites button that I was talking about a bit earlier. Also, I'll throw up an example, but most of the time there will be a blue bargain button here in which you can create a bargain for the skin, but that has a minimum price range, which I think is 25 USD roundabout. So obviously this is only around 62 cents. So you can't really bargain for that, but in most cases you will be able to bargain. Here, I'll just quickly show you what I mean. Right now I'm on the factory new Talon Tiger Tooth, and as you can see, there is the blue bargain button right there. If you click it, this pops up and you'll be able to enter the bargain amount you want. All right, now that I've found the skin that I want, the triple zero three float factory new Night Riot, I'll simply click buy, choose buff balance Alipay because that's what I have the balance in. A, this will pop up. You can choose to have the seller send the offer, but I always do send offer in app. It just makes it way easier for me to remember and it's a quicker process. So let's hit that. Now just navigate over to the app. Once you're in the app, navigate to the me tab that I spoke about earlier. Click the buy history button, which I mentioned. As you can see, there's a little orange one there. And this one says waiting for your offer. So you have five minutes to send the offer or else you will be penalized. I'll talk about the penalties a bit later in this video, but simply click on it and click send offer. As you can see, there is a timer up there waiting for you to send the offer. It's sending it right now through Steam. I just sent it. Boom. It's as simple as that. You don't have to manually send it through Steam to the person. Since your Steam is linked with your buff account, it will do it for you just by simply clicking that button. Now we just have to wait for the seller to send the item and the item will go instantly to your Steam inventory. Right now, while we're still on the topic of purchasing, there are a couple more things we need to talk about. Right now, I'm looking at StatTrack Minimal Wear Famos Eye of Athena's. I'm going to 
type in a float range here of below 0 0.0875 because that's what I'm looking for. These are quite expensive, but I'm going to click bulk buy. So if you're looking to buy multiple items at once, this is what you'd want to do. It's way quicker than just clicking buy and then clicking send offer over and over. So as you can see, the prices start at 152.9 RMB and the second cheapest one is 152.98. So I'm going to click bulk buy here and I'm going to type in 152.98, the price of the second one. And as you can see, the quantity available is only two. So I'm going to type in two and I'm going to click confirm. Hey, I'm going to take a second, confirm again, send offer an app. Now we're going to navigate back over to the app. Once you're in the app again, go back to the buy history tab. This time it has two because you bought two. And now you're instantly prompted with, you've got two trade offers to be sent. Send them now. If you click do it, it will do both of them at once. But I'm just going to click cancel just to show you guys in case you don't click do it. So boom, they're still there waiting for the offer. If you just refresh the page, it should prompt you again. It may not though. Okay, it didn't. But if you click this, just click one of them, it will prompt you again. So that's okay. Click do it. Speaking from experience though, it only holds 24 items on the page. So if you bulk buy more than 25, you're going to have to click yes, do it to 24 of them and then scroll down and click and then do it again. So be careful of that and make sure you're sending all the offers within five minutes or you will be penalized. I've made that mistake before. The final thing I'd like to take a look at while we're still on the topic of buying is placing buy orders. So as you can see, we're still here on StatTrack Minimalware Famos I of Athena's. Let's click on place buy order. I'm gonna show you guys something. In here, as you can see, there isn't an option for float. Even though I have 0 0.0875 still selected, it's not an option here. Be very careful of that. Just because you have it selected here doesn't mean it will be selected in the buy order. So if you were going to want to purchase any float Star Trek Minimal Wear I of Athena, you would just type in the price that you're willing to pay and the number of them that you want to buy. I'm not going to do that right now because I want to show you one other thing above a certain price range as well. So let's go to factory new really quick, Star Trek factory new. Above a certain price, when you do hit place buy order, there actually is an option for the float range. I think that that number is similar to the bargain number, which is around 25 USD from my experience, but just be very careful of that. So you actually can search for a custom float range now, which you could put in as what, 0.05 max since we're on factory new and type in the price and quantity the same way you would otherwise. I think we covered all the bases for buying. So now let's move on to selling. All right, now let's go over selling. First things first, on the buff website, navigate over to the inventory tab. Once you're here, instead of display all, click that and choose saleable. This will show you every item that you can currently sell. Once you know what you want to sell, simply click on it, make sure it has the orange check mark, and then click the blue sell button. As you can see, it shows you the current lowest listing for the item at hand, which is 692 RMB at the moment. I'm going to list this for something lower so it sells quickly at 665 and then just click sell. Now that we listed it, navigate over to the sale tab. Here you can see every item you currently have up for sale. I'll check back when it sells. Holy, this is that window shopping I was talking about earlier. Look at this 4X IBP hollow craft on this hot rod. That's insane. And another 4X cattle craft down here on the minimal wear red line. Also crazy. I'll probably never be able to afford either of these but as you can see up here the sale tab is highlighted in red so let's click that i think our nightmare sold yes it did so now rather than being in the selling tab it's in the pending delivery tab and right here you can just click process on steam this will bring you directly to steam's website where you can confirm the trade it will always say it's sus because you're trading an item worth quite a bit of money in this case for nothing but yeah say it's a gift and then accept the trade now you'll need to confirm it on the mobile authenticator all right now in the mobile authenticator Indicator, click the bell then go to one confirmation needed click on it and click confirm trade also before i do that always 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 make sure the person that you're sending the item to is the exact same one that bought the skin from you unfortunately it is very easy for a person to fake the name level and badges on an account so make sure that both accounts have the exact same creation date it's really not that difficult to do so make sure you take the time to do that to completely avoid being scammed but once you've done that just click confirm trade and you're done and as you can see on buff it's now registered as completed and boom once you refresh you should have the money from that in your balance the final sale mechanic i want to show you guys is quick selling also known as fulfilling a buy order as you can see we're back in the inventory on saleable and i do have a stat track factory new sawed off devourer in here so from here i'm going to go over to the market 
search devourer click it you can click whatever one of them because from here you will be able to check off factory new and then make sure you make it stat track in my case by the way only do this if you're okay with the sale price this is just if you want to quickly get rid of the item for balance or if there's a good price but from here once you have the item selected go to buy orders scroll down because a lot of these will be float dependent mine is actually less than 0 0.05 float if i remember correctly i think it was 0 0.049 so from here this is the highest listing for that so i'm going to click on supply and then boom yes it was 0 0.049 float we got lucky in this case so then click it and then click confirm and that will instantly sell it and once you've done that go over to the sale tab now from here it's telling you to go to the app now we're back in the app currently on the me tab head on over to the sell tab and in here you will see delivery this is pending delivery this is what we just supplied Click deliver. I usually just click process all pending because hitting send sometimes bugs out if there's multiple. So I'm just going to click that. It will process the trade. And it does warn you to check the person's Steam information to make sure they're not scamming you. Once you've done that, we'll go back into the Steam mobile app. Click that bell again. Click one confirmation needed. Click on it and confirm it. It's as simple as that. Now, as soon as that processes and completely goes through, you will instantly have the balance. Before I go into the penalties, one thing that's more of a rule to know is that you can't have more than 100 pending outgoing offers at once. So if you try to bulk buy over 100 things at a time, you will run into some issues. Now for the penalties. First, if you fail to send an offer in the app within five minutes of purchasing it, you run the risk of a 12 hour buying restriction. So make sure to avoid that. Next, if you buy an item and request that the seller sends the Steam offer, then you reject it, Buff will keep 2% of the total purchase price as compensation to the seller. So you will lose 2% of the total purchase cost. Cost. Finally, if you sell an item and fail to deliver it within 12 hours, you run the risk of a short-term ban. The first offense is a three-day ban, but if you're a repeat offender, this may increase to a whole week. If you enjoyed this video, YouTube thinks you'll like this one too. Oh yeah, and YouTube told me 75% of you aren't subscribed yet, so go thumb wrestle that subscribe button down below.